So if we try it now, hmm, interesting. Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. Hope you've been enjoying your Mesh-tastic lately and also FPV as we've seen quite a few new subscribers on the FPV side of things as well. So welcome to the channel. Um, we cover FPV, we cover Mesh-tastic, radio, lots of different subjects, e-bikes on this channel. So expect to see videos on all those different types of things. It's not just FPV and it's not just Mesh-tastic. So anyway, on with the video. So today's video is gonna be about Mesh-tastic and in particular, what I wanna talk about today is interference. So RF interference, basically, because obviously Mesh-tastic uses radio waves, it uses LoRa to send messages and data over what is effectively an ISM band. And an ISM band is basically industrial, scientific, medical. And what this means for us is that it's a part of the radio spectrum that is license free. So you can expect lots of devices to be using this, not just Mesh-tastic. Now that can be a little bit unfortunate for us Mesh-tastic users because it means we have to share the band with other devices and they can cause interference to us and stop our messages getting where they're supposed to. And I have received quite a lot of messages from different users saying that in their area, there's lots of interference. And one user I know who suffers with this really badly is a station called CatM, which is run by Brian, and it's over on in Caterham. Now, Caterham's got a very good location, and Brian has an extremely good takeoff, so he can hit stations all over the mesh um, very, very well. But the problem is, as you can see here, on the center frequency of long fast, which is 869.525 megahertz, there is just an absolute mess of interference. And now Brian has actually tracked this down and worked out that this is an electric vehicle charge point on somebody's house nearby um, that's causing this dreadful mess of interference. Now, I don't think this is technically legal, um, what, this, what this is doing here, because there is supposed to be a duty cycle limit on transmissions. So if this, um, if this transmission is just literally you know, transmitting all the time. Now it is actually breaking duty cycle limits, so I don't know. But anyway, this is causing a lot of problems for him because it just means he can't receive very well. And I'm sure there are other stations out there with problems like this that may not be aware now, the thing about LoRa, the radio protocol that Mesh-tastic uses to send messages, and it's also used by other devices as well, is that it's actually designed to handle interference very well. And it does, for the most part. But as you can see in that sort of situation that Brian has there, um, it, it's going to cause problems. There's no way around it. It's not going to be as good as it would be if there wasn't any interference there. So interference is one thing that you should consider if you are actually having problems with messages not going through and you're not having much luck on the mesh, you should consider the interference issue. And I'm gonna show you how you can investigate that further. So to help me investigate interference, I've put together this device. It's basically an Android smartphone um, running SDR Touch software. And I've just literally got an, an SDR dongle connected um, directly to the smartphone by USB-C. And this is Android, obviously. I don't think you'd be able to do this with, do this with iOS. Um, but this now enables me to see, you know, a visual representation of what's actually going on um, on the band here. So you can see here with the center frequency is 869.525 megahertz, which is, of course, long fast frequency. And um, yeah, and you can see these big lines here, which are basically my node or my two nodes that I've got in around this area, um, basically, you know, doing their thing. But what's interesting here is you can see, can you see this line here, this carrier that sort of appears every now and again? If we can just turn the volume up on this. So that's a lower transmission. That's kind of what it sounds like. It's a bit kind of weird, but look how wide band it is. Obviously it's, it's covering, you know, 250 kilohertz. Uh, of, of spectrum there but now you can see this other carrier that's just appeared here and it actually kind of almost like desenses the receiver um, this black line here and um, whether that's going to interfere with Laura probably not not in this case but bear in mind this is actually on my desk so if we actually sort of you know take it near a window you can act or even just moving it up like that it's actually quite a lot stronger than it was so it's actually you know, wiping out that section of the band. Right, so we can do an interesting test here. Basically, what we can see is if this carrier is actually affecting my comms, um, you know, going out and coming back again. So if we did like a trace route to Royden station, which is 10.3 kilometers away, you can see it comes straight back. What happens if we wait to do that when we get this carrier? So if we try it now,
Hmm. Interesting. So that <laughs> might indicate um, that that carrier is actually affecting things. Let's wait for the next one to happen, and then. Oh, so we just wait for that to happen, and then we'll just try it in the clear again. So let's just trace route now. Comes back straight away. So now we'll wait until it basically we get this carrier. Let's try that. Well, that tells you quite a lot, doesn't it? So that is really interesting and a, a big eye open. I'm sure it's going to be for some of you guys watching this. Um, now, I'm not going to kind of, you know, throw my toys out of the pram and stop moaning about this because actually I've known about this carrier that's um, present in this area for quite a long time, right at the beginning, actually, since, since I started playing around with Meshtastic. Because one of the first things I did before playing around with Meshtastic was kind of have a look on the band and just see what was what was kind of going on there. Um, mainly because I was kind of interested in helium as well and, and in the other eye. OT stuff. Um, but the other thing to remember is that when you send a message out on uh, MeshTastic, it actually tries a few times. It doesn't kind of just do do it once, which I believe that trace route was doing. It did literally look like it was just doing it once, um, just sending the packet out and waiting for a response. Um, but the messages do try a few times to go. So I think judging by the experience that I, I'm getting personally on MeshTastic, where most of the time the messages are pretty quick, between me and Royden, it is very fast and snappy and we can usually message all the time. It's not a problem. Um, but it is interesting. It is very interesting that that carrier there could be influencing things, um, you know, when... You know, you don't see a message arrive at my node, uh, for example, then maybe that's that's why. Also, remember that this is interference that's present just on my end. Um, if interference happened at Royden's end as well, then, you know, there might be a, a, a small window um, to actually get the package through. And then, of course, if you are routing through multiple nodes as well, then there could be any number of uh, kind of interference issues at, at any of those stations. So you can start to see how this can kind of get really difficult. So this has turned out to be quite a useful tool. You can, of course, do this with a PC. You don't need to use a smartphone. Um, but any smartphone running Android that has a reasonable kind of CPU will be able to deal with this. And these little um, SDR dongles are about 30 or quid, something like that. And there's obviously this one, which was one I had from, from earlier on. But yeah, you can find these on Amazon and I'll leave the links below if you want to do this. What I think I'm actually going to do is put together a Raspberry Pi based node and maybe add the SDR dongle to it and then put it on my masthead uh, and then I could actually run, because uh, these will work with the Raspberry Pi as well if you run like GQRX SDR software, then you'd actually be able to see the interference from the top of your mast if you're using that sort of thing. So there'll be a video about that probably at some point. One thing I forgot to mention that has been pointed out by the community a few times that people have noticed um, as an interference source are temporary traffic lights in the UK. Yeah, believe it or not, some of these um, temporary traffic lights are actually using 869.525 uh, to as, as the link between the two ends of the traffic lights uh, and that has caused a lot of problems for, for people as well and interestingly again these traffic lights are transmitting continuously um, on 869.525 which is not technically allowed because it's supposed to be uh, a 10 percent duty cycle which we've on Meshtastic we actually obey so things like that which might also be putting out you know, 500 milliwatts of output power um, into a gain antenna, uh, they could be, th th those signals could be wiping out um, mesh-tastic nodes for a long way. So this is all useful stuff, guys, to help you get a better mesh-tastic experience. Hopefully, you know, you haven't got bad interference in your area, um, but you might not know until you kind of, you know, look a bit closer. That's it for this one, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll catch you later.